Welcome to Hub City Now with your host, Tyrone Tony Reed. Hello and welcome to Hub City Now. I'm your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr. And today we have a very, very special guest. I am very pleased to have him in the studio uh, today. Uh, he is an actor. He's a screenwriter. He's a playwright. He has a movie coming out soon uh, called uh, Stronger. It's starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, he wrote the screenplay for that. Uh, he's part of a, uh, a Los Angeles-based collective of playwrights called the Timblers. Um, everybody put your hands together for John Polano. Well Polano. Well <laughs> well um, thank you for being here so much. Thanks I, for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. And sure. Uh, yeah, you know, man, I was, uh, uh, I was born in New York uh, when I was real little. Mm -hmm. We moved to New Hampshire. Okay. I was raised in southern New Hampshire, about wow. 35, 40 minutes north of Boston. Okay. And uh, went to University of New Hampshire. Then I uh, went to NYU for a little bit on a, for a summer. Mm -hmm. Couldn't afford to go there full time, so I went for a summer, like a uh, extended course. I right. had a lawnmower business in, oh, okay. in high school and college, so I saved my lawnmower money. Went and did that and then kind of opened up a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. Took some acting stuff out there, and then I moved to... Uh, Colorado for about a year and a half just to write a terrible novel when I was 21 years old. <laughs> what was the name of it? Oh, Jesus. I, don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I, I forgot what I went with. It was awful. Uh, it was just a bunch of words. Mm -hmm. But, you know, man, you, it's just, you have to get a lot of really bad material out of you. Right. Before the good before stuff. The good stuff. Right. Uh, and then I moved to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. worked in uh, mailroom at, um, started a, at Castle Rock Entertainment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mail. And then the assistant to the VP of publicity uh, kind of, I think we got fired or quit or something. And then they were like, Hey, do you want to do this? I was there for about three months. And I was like, sure. <laughs> so I kind of got into that position and I worked in that capacity for a while. And I was taking, you know, acting classes and writing on the side mm -hmm. and then, uh, just got into theater out there, believe it or not. And that was started a theater company. And that's sort of what ultimately launched my career is through theater. So have you Strangely. always wanted to write? Have you always yeah, to I always did, man. I mean, you know, when I was little, I, I, I just, I just kind of had a, a knack for it. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was in the third grade, I won this young art, young authors award mm -hmm. uh, for pretty much plagiarizing. Another, I just didn't know what that meant, but I was like, <laughs> I read this book about like this little raccoon, and I was like, this is great. And I was like, I'll just change the name. And I took, I was like, I just didn't comprehend <laughs> right, that. Right, right. Although right. now I learned that the the best of the best uh, steal from other people. But I, I mean, I literally, and then I drew it and I was like, there was a story, you know, about this kid who had a little pet raccoon and I was like, oh, I wish the raccoon had babies. So like I put that in there. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so I won and I won this award and I got all this. And I remember the teacher went up to me and she's like, did you copy this thing? And I was like, uh, yeah. But by then I'd already had the award and right. conquered New Hampshire. <laughs> so that was kind of the first foray. And then, um, yeah, and then I just kept, you know, writing short stories all through then. And I was really, really into Stephen King. Okay, yeah. And really into, like, that horror short story fiction. Mm -hmm. I just wrote a bunch of short stories. But, uh, you know, I never didn't really have anybody to read them. Um, and then I had a couple of girlfriends who were interested in it. And I'd, like, put them in the stories mm -hmm. and read it. And, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then I, I had a couple of really good teachers in high school, mm -hmm. kind of, you know. And I wonder that, you know, if you don't, if you get rewarded at a certain age for something, then you'll kind of pursue it more. Right. And then I went to college and I studied, uh, you know, English at UNH and I had a, some really good professors, but um, it took me a long time to have the discipline and to really find my voice and figure out. And that, that happened in theater. And, right. You know, I think when you're in the arts, especially as a writer, you, you learn the most by getting feedback for what you're doing. That's right. And, and, you know, if you write a screenplay, it can take two years until, if you're lucky, it's made. Right. And right. then, you know, two and a half years, you're seeing an audience and seeing it and you're like, mm. oh, that line works. That didn't so theater is great for the quick, feedback, yes. right? Quick feedback. As an actor, that's why you get your your skill set goes so quickly, and as a writer too, because you're you're it's you're creating it, you're taking the feedback from the audience, you're shaping mm -hmm. it, you're seeing what works, what doesn't, and it's a it's a really great incubator for that. So right. I'm so happy I I found theater and it became a big part of my life. Late in later in my life, I mean, mm -hmm. I had never been to a play until I was. I think like the second play, I I'd seen one play and then I was in a play. That's kind of how it went. Right. But then you know that it's such such a great world and it's uh, so that that sort of cracked me open. So did the writing and the acting go hand in hand? Did you go? You know, I love writing. Maybe I want to be an actor too. Or how how did that? How did how did the acting? Go? Yeah, I mean that's really kind of I think central to my sort of process is that I I I'd, I'd never. 
I think probably secretly always loved the idea of being an actor, but I did not grow up in an area where anyone did any of that. Mm-hmm. They no one was a writer, never mind, you know, an actor. And I, it was just not ever an option. But when I came out to Los Angeles, you know, a lot of the advice people would give, say, hey, you want to be a better writer? Take an improv class, take an acting class. So mm-hmm. I, I took an acting class under the pretense of, what will I learn here to make myself a better writer? Right. But then I got kind of bitten by the bug, and, and they, this two started to inform each other and continue mm-hmm. to inform each other. Right. You know, I think a lot of my writing is looked at, uh, I look at it when I create a character or write dialogue or a scene from an actor's perspective to kind of sink in that for a moment. It, the, the tool set as an actor helps you get into the, the mind of your character rather right. organically. Right. And, and, you know, a lot of my writing tends to be very sort of character-based mm-hmm. with, with you know, with that, it's not. Yeah, I've, I've seen the praises for, 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 for many of your, oh, your plays. You. <laughs> um, in fact, that's what I want to get into um, now is that, um, God, so many notes. <laughs> um, you um, started out with short, short films, um, 1996 Return of the Sun Devil. Oh, right. That was man. <laughs> Jeez, you just me. That was a, a, a guy I knew who I met at that NYU film class, which, you know, like for me, that was such a, I just talked to my wife about this because <laughs> our daughter's starting a new school is that I, I remember the period when I first went to NYU when I must have been 20, 21 years old. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time in my life I was around other creative people who wanted it, had a similar pursuit right. uh, that I did. Right. So people who watch movies, read books, poetry, all this stuff that, I mean, look, where I grew up in sort of more, you know, rural New Hampshire, Manchester, Londonderry area, it was very sports oriented. And right. I, I definitely was not brave enough to <laughs> be part of an arts group mm-hmm. or any of that stuff. I was super dialed into my friends and to sports and I was sort of closeted in terms of my creative ambitions. Right. So to really be around people and have that freedom was just like, you know, a whole new world. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I remember sitting with people and, you know, sitting in like your little dorm apartment room and just talking until three in the morning about Mm. movies and all this. Mm -hmm. And and it was just like, it just awoke part of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that was a film where a guy who I had met, he was a year younger and he was in a a school and and he had done the stop motion short that was really good. and, And he had just had me come over and I helped him write the narration. And that That's really awesome. Extent. I mean, they, you know, it takes 30 hours to make the character take two steps. Right, and I, right, I went right. in for a day and I, <laughs> and I wrote this narration right. and now I'm forever linked to the film, but I, mean, I really <laughs> did hardly anything for it. All right. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Hello and welcome back to Hub City Now. I'm your host, Tyrone Tony Reed Jr. And we are speaking with John Polano, actor, screenwriter, Award-winning playwright. You know him from This Is Us, Fort McCoy, Major Crimes, uh, TNT's Mob City, um, NBC's uh, TV series This Is Us as uh, Randall Pearson's boss, Tyler. And also he's going to um, have a movie coming up um, that he wrote the screenplay for called Stronger, which is the inspiring true story of Jeff Bauman, one of the survivors of the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings. It's based on, his, the screenplay is based on the book of the same name by Jeff Bowman and Brett Witter. So welcome back, John Polano. 2011 Small Engine Repair. Right. Won the Los Angeles Dramatic Critics Award, the Los Angeles Ovation, um, and Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Awards for Best Play. And you also won for the Los Angeles um, Drama Critics Circle Award for Best Writing. Right. Amazing. Yeah, no, that was great. I mean, that, that, that's sort of the play that really, you know, I'd written plays for a while, but that was the play that sort of took me to a whole other level mm-hmm. career-wise uh, mm-hmm. as an actor and as, because uh, I was in it as well, and, mm-hmm. as, and as a writer. And it continues to, you know, be one of the sort of stronger samples amongst other things. But, you know, I had, my wife and I had started a theater company and uh, we had a kid real quick, and mm-hmm. then we sort of – that theater company was sort of a pop-up theater company. Mm-hmm. We would rent out spaces and do stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the director of the first play, full-length play I ever wrote called Lost and Found, um, this guy John Flynn, he he took our company. We had like a nonprofit status and created this company with all of us we founded called uh, Rogue Machine, mm-hmm. which is uh, in L.A. right now still running. And, and his goal with that was to create – you know, original material, Mm -hmm. uh, produce original plays. At that time, especially most, you know, L.A. has an amazing, uh, 
one of the best talent pools probably in the world of mm. actors and directors and writers. But uh, L.A. is struggles somewhat as a th- scene of theater because of the – for many reasons. But right. it does have a th- very thriving uh, community that every year people were, were working harder and harder to make – to legitimize it and to make it, you know, better and better. But – at this particular time, my wife, uh, who's a great actress, uh, who, I mean, we met, I, she was in acting class and I right. started to write plays for her. That, so <laughs> right. that was a great way to meet. That's awesome. <laughs> so she was all, she's also a very talented producer. She produced this uh, late night series. Okay. And you had sort of the main stage plays, which were bigger budgets. And then the late night plays, you could kind of take a chance with. They were lower budget. So you'd have the regular play. At this time, they, uh, Cormac McCarthy had a play called Sunset Limited. Mm-hmm. Really good. They had their set. They would finish at, say, 10 past 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. and they'd get off the stage and then it was our stage so mm-hmm. we would have to use their basic stage and then kind of change it a little bit and then go on at 10 30 and do a show so you can write whatever the heck you want right so i wrote this play small engine repair which was really it was about my neighborhood i grew up in but like mm-hmm. a very nightmarish dark hysterical politically incorrect really messed up unfiltered story right and about characters I knew and I grew up with. And it was mm-hmm. sort of that what-if scenario. It's a revenge play. Mm-hmm. But the central character that I played was like, well, what, what would my life have been if I had never left? If I never wanted to be a writer and I kind of stayed. It's right. kind of a working class guy. And okay. Friends. Composites of guys I grew up with. So, mm-hmm. and again, it, completely unfiltered. We didn't have any idea. We're like, this is so <laughs> – people might walk out. <laughs> right, right. So we did that at late night, and it ended up being this huge hit. And, mm-hmm. and our initial budget was like maybe under $1,000. Wow. You know, and it just started selling out, and it was this huge hit. And then our – you know, our artistic director moved it to the main stage, and we ended up running in L.A. We ended up moving to another theater. We ran for almost a year. I mean, it was a, a huge, huge hit. Mm-hmm. Ended up going off-Broadway in New York, and to this day, it's done all over the place. So that was, like, the was big awesome. one. And for me, it was, like, so interesting because I just wrote unfiltered. I was mm-hmm. like, not cognizant at all of, like, what will happen. I mm-hmm. just did it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was a great lesson to learn. Um, and it came at a great time. And, and, yeah, it opened up a lot of doors. I mean, I think it, it, it lent its to where I am as a writer today. That was sort of, you know, if someone comes in a room and, and you say, hey, these guys are great writer, it's like, okay, well, let's see it. That mm. was sort of the, the, the sort of uh, sample that became people would read it and be like, Cry, you know, I, I got to meet this guy. Right, right. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back in just a few minutes with our guest, John Polano. All right, welcome back to Hub City Now. Uh, we're here with John Paul. Paul say, say it. Polono. Polano. If you're from Polano. Boston, it's Polano. 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 Okay. Um, we're, we're here with an uh, actor, screenwriter, playwright. Um, we're talking about, you know, his life and how he got to from, from where he started to where he is now. Um, you, you've seen him in How I Met Your Mother, um, Fort McCoy, uh, Major Crimes, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, 2013 Sex and Marriage, the TNT TV series Mob City, um, Masters of Sex, Intelligence, and recently you probably know him as Tyler, Randall Pearson's boss in This Is Us. What was that like being part of that that phenomenon? I mean, it's just kind of like that show just kind of Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, I... uh... (laughs) I hadn't seen the show when I was cast, mm-hmm. and then, you know, you, you, hey, it's a job. Right, right. And then I watched it. My wife and my daughter, who's 12, were, mm-hmm. uh, were into it, and then I, we really got into it. And mm-hmm. I thought it was, like, so beautifully done. And a lot is. of playwrights it wrote it. And, and just humane, man. And it was, mm-hmm. like, coming at a time for, for me in terms of where we are as a country. It was so good to see stories that spin on characters trying to do their best. Mm-hmm. And it's not... They're know, not perfect. They're not perfect. Right. But so, the struggles are, the central dilemma of that is based on love and mm-hmm. trying to get through it. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I got lucky. I got to work with Sterling, who is just an awesome guy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not only a great giving actor. I mean, look, man, sometimes you do these things and the stars come in and, you know, they're all, you know, close up on mm-hmm. them and they're all into it. And then the camera flips over and it's on you and they mm-hmm. either phone it in or sometimes they leave. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then like the director or somebody else has to read the lines but Sterling was there and he he was like so giving and he comes from theater too actually uh, th- th- my theater director I work with a lot named Joe Bonney from New York had mm-hmm. worked with Sterling and so we had that connection oh, okay and, and yeah he's just one of those guys I mean the whole cast everybody but mm-hmm. I worked mostly with him and, mm-hmm. and you know he set the tone and, and everybody people came in for two lines and they were like felt welcome and organic and mm-hmm. for me you know, it wasn't the biggest role, and they mm-hmm. ended up cutting out a lot, obviously, of mm-hmm. deeper stuff. But nonetheless, it was just fun, man. He was just like, hey, it's about you. It's your money. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, 
Now let's talk about the the, the movie that's that's coming out now. You're going to be playing. You're going to be Black Hawk. And also- <laughs> yeah, actually, my role got cut out of that. That was just a little cameo. And that, yeah, man. Oh, uh, yeah, it did. It's fine. But it, it's, uh, it's called Stronger. Yeah. Um, it you wrote the screenplay. Um, from uh, it's based on the book of the same name by Jeff Bowman and Brett Witter. Uh, tell us about Stronger. What? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So Stronger is a true story about um, you know the Boston bombing. There was sort of a signature photo of that. Mm-hmm. And it was a guy who had just recently had his legs obliterated, mm-hmm. and there's a guy with a cowboy hat pushing him. And they right. took that photo, and it became sort of the photo that spread. And he came out of the hospital, and he became sort of a, a public figure mm-hmm. for for the bombing. And this is sort of the story behind it, and okay. it's showing, you know, how hard it was. Sort of the truth behind that right. and, and the pressures he went through. Right. And, you know, it, it's sort of an unflinching look at that, filled with a lot of comedy and a lot of heart. And mm-hmm. it's ultimately a very inspirational story because Jeff is, like, kind of an amazing guy. Mm-hmm. But he is not a hero in the traditional sense. He's like a regular guy who would have been just really happy, you know, drinking beer, watching the Red Sox right. and goofing around. And this happened to him, and he really had to figure his life out really right. quick. Right. And yeah, and, that, and that's sort of the story. And, and you know, he, he had written a book really quick and it had some sort of really interesting moments in it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I actually grew up pretty close to where he's from. Okay. And uh, I think, you know, part of the reason maybe I was you know hired to, to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I went out and just spent a lot of time with him. And it's like, I, you know, like I said, my sister worked in the town he lived in. Wow. And, uh, you know, I grew up 35 minutes from there and just kind of dug in and, and really got to, uh, thankfully, they all trusted me with. The book is uh, is is good, and it's uh, it's like an airport book. You grab it and you, and you read it, and it's touching. But right. the, the story beneath that mm-hmm. really they revealed to me mm-hmm. over a period of time, and, and that's what the movie is. Okay. It's, uh, it's it's the truth. Right, and that comes out on September twenty second. Yep. Stars Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal Jeff is uh, Jeff Bowman does an amazing job. Tatiana Maslany plays uh, his girlfriend mm-hmm. uh, uh, Aaron mm-hmm. Hurley, and she's fantastic. Um, David Gordon Green directed it, who's like the best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was great, man. It was a, it was, a, it was a really, really great experience, a great team. And, and uh, I, I've seen the movie a bunch of times with like contained audiences. And, right. I mean, even though I wrote the thing and I lived with it, it was still mm. like, it t- tears me up. But I'm really <laughs> looking forward to seeing it with an audience of people who have no affiliation with it and just right. see it kind of fresh. Well, that's awesome. Um, I encourage everybody to go out because it's already getting lots of buzz and I've heard that it's a contender for best adapted screenplay. So. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, I, that, I you just, probably <laughs> saw that in some weird little blog. You know? I saw I saw that in uh, um the, the LA Times, the yeah, the Los Angeles Times. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's news to me. <laughs> I don't even know if they saw that. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed part 1 of our interview with our special guest John Polano. We will air the second part of that special interview with John Polano on Sunday, September 17th, 6 a.m. on 97.7 Jam and Jackson. Tune in to hear more about actor, screenwriter, and award-winning playwright John Polano as he talks more about uh, Stronger, which comes out on the 22nd on Friday. So make sure that you tune, uh, go and check that movie out because it's going to be a great movie and learn more about John Polano. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the news. We'll be right back in just a moment. Hello, and welcome back to Hub City Now. It's time for uh, the news that you'll see in the Crime Scene Examiner newspaper this week. One of the first stories on the cover page, two suspects were arrested for killing a man during an East Memphis robbery. Those uh, suspects' names are Ronnie Stewart and Taquavius Durham. Uh, Also, you'll find a story about eight pounds of heroin worth $250,000 being seized from a South Nashville apartment. The two suspects charged in that crime are Alejandro Larcia Montez and Tatiana Gonzalez Sardo. Here in Jackson, there is an ongoing investigation into 2016 double homicide, which resulted in two additional arrests. Uh, Those people who were arrested were Mark, let me make sure I say his name right, Mark Quentin Williams, 
who was arrested in Tippa County, Mississippi. Uh, Williams is charged with two counts of first-degree murder and is being held without bond pending his arraignment. Uh, also, Erica Beard was arrested and charged with one count of criminal conspiracy to commit aggravated burglary and aggravated robbery and one account of accessory after the fact to first-degree murder. She was booked into the Hardeman County Jail where she is being held on a million-dollar bond. So those are um, some crime stories that you'll find in the paper. Also, uh, the vice mayor honors the uh, native son on Monday during a family gathering, uh, four-term city councilman and current vice mayor Ernest Brooks II of District 3 presented a proclamation to Dr. Jonathan Collins. So you can find out more about that story. Uh, happy birthday to Kiosha Williams, who turned 20. She There's a, a featured um, article in there also about that. In the West Tennessee Outdoors w- column with Ray Jones, you'll find out more about the Eagle's Nest Horse Show, which also includes a photo. You'll see the Crime Scene Examiner News Reader of the Week, who is Mr. Andre Lyles. Uh, Mr. Lyles was, has been at GQ Fashions at the Hamilton Hills Shopping Plaza over 20 years serving customers. So if you see Mr. Andre, 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 Andre Lyles uh, this week, let him know that you heard that he was the Crime Scene Examiner News Reader of the Week. Of course, you can't see the crime scene without the mug shots. So there are um, many uh, JPD mug shots There's also um, a couple of men wanted in shoplifting. Milan arrest ports. The um, Tennessee governor's race. Uh, A lot of people have already started uh, campaigning and and meeting uh, people throughout the state to get endorsements and to get your vote. Uh, You can find... uh, Downtown Ricky Brown's uh, column, Brown Beat, where he travels around and see some of the pictures of some of the people in our community who are doing great things. Uh, Gamma Psi Sorority selects new leadership. You can read about that. You can also read about the um, sports featured in the Crime Scene Examiner News. Uh, the Lane College Dragons knocked off Texas College in season opener. You can read more about that. You can find out so much information about what's going on here in Jackson and and surrounding areas. So make sure you pick up your copy of the Crime Scene Examiner News and find out more about what's going on. Also, two important dates are going to occur on Monday and Tuesday. On uh, tomorrow, Monday, September 11th, will mark 16 years since the attack here uh, on U.S. soil. So please be praying for all who are uh, affected by that tragedy. Pray for those families who lost loved ones. Pray for those who survived. Pray for those who witnessed. Pray for all of us. Pray for America. Pray for this entire world. Uh, On Tuesday, my wife's grandmother, Mrs. Uh, Annie Ruth Rogers, will officially turn 95 years old. She has lived through 17 U.S. presidents. She's been through the civil rights movement, the Great Depression. She's seen a lot and she's learned a lot and she has a lot to share. So happy birthday, Mrs. Annie Ruth Rogers. We are so happy and thankful to God that you are still here. May God give you many, many more years. And I'd like to thank our sponsors, um, Baskerville Funeral Home, City of Brownsville, Nail Huntsman's Flower Box, R&R Custom Wheels and Tires Express, Styles Menswear and the Crime Scene Examiner News. Be sure to join us next week for part two of our interview with John Polano, and we will talk to you next week. God bless.